Hey guys, so I am here with um, Pickle, who is a root in progress. And I've gotten a lot of questions lately, and I thought that maybe it would be really helpful um, to some of you to really break down fiber, um, where it comes from, the differences between different types of fiber, the differences in rooting needles, um, just some like really basic info that is good to have. It'll help you when you're trying to select the right kind of fibers and all that kind of stuff. So one question that I get a lot is, what is the difference between mohair and alpaca? So the first main difference is alpaca comes from an alpaca. It is a completely different animal. That's what makes it alpaca fiber. It comes from an alpaca. Mohair comes from a goat. Normally, it is an angora goat, um, but there can be some different types of mohair. The next, well, I, okay, let me say, let's go back to alpaca really quickly. Alpaca generally has one kind of fineness. And there are slight variations, of course, but most all alpaca is very, very fine. It is so soft. Um, alpaca is what I think is the best type of hair to root um, baby hairs. And it's also really fantastic for newborn size dolls like Delilah, for instance. Um, if you are doing like a mini or a preemie, I cannot imagine rooting with anything but alpaca. I love alpaca fiber. Um, I used to only root with alpaca fiber. It is super fine, super soft. And as far as like the, I think they're called microns. I'm not going to get into too much of this because it's like super, <laughs> super confusing. But uh, strand to strand, alpaca is actually str a little bit stronger than mohair, which is crazy, right? Because it is so much softer and so much finer. Um, a couple cons for alpaca. Um, it is harder to care for. It can mat a little bit easier just because it is so fine. It can get tangled. It can get a little more frizzy. Um, a lot of high-end dolls where they're more, you know, the people are buying these dolls and they have them on a shelf for display. You're going to see a lot of them are rooted with alpaca. It's all I used to use. Um, and then I started using mohair fairly recently in the last uh, three to four years. Um... So it's harder to care for, but nothing beats the fineness and softness. And just for realism level, level newborn babies, alpaca is the way to go. Okay, so mohair, we've talked, I just talked about how it comes from a goat and not an alpaca. There are a lot of different types of mohair. Um... The first thing is that there is a straight or what they call large wave mohair. And that mohair is going to look a bit like this. And so it goes, um, this is like the straightest mohair you are ever going to get. Um, you can kind of see if you look closely, it does have a couple large waves, but when you cut the length that you need to cut to root, um, you pretty much get rid of those waves and this is going to give you a nice straight hair like this. Um, and then it goes, you know, just up from there, you can get wavy hair. Um, all the way to like super, super curly hair. There's all different types. Um, and there's also different, I don't want to say, well, there are different quality levels, of course, 
based on how the people care for their goats, how the hair is processed, how old the hair is, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is unprocessed mohair. Um, you get it and it comes like this. These are fairly um, normal size cut lengths that you would get for normal hair. This is not processed. It has not been washed. Um, a good way to know if the hair that you're buying is a good quality processed hair is to smell it. If it smells like a goat, it has not been processed well, if at all. Um, I do see a lot of people that sell on like Etsy and other places, they buy this raw fiber because this is crazy cheap. Um, this big thing of fiber here I got for like $5. Um, for comparison, you know, this is like $35, so you can see the difference. Um, so I see a lot of people that buy this, like you can see there's hay and stuff in it. Um, they will basically just, you know, comb it, tie it together, wash it, comb it again, and that's it. They're selling it. You get it. It might still have little strands of hair or fecal matter, whatever is in it, and it stinks like an animal. Um, you can tell, like I said, if you're buying hair like that, that has an odor, that has debris, that has lice eggs, um, that it is not quality fiber, it has not been processed correctly, um, and it's probably not a good fiber to buy. Um, as far as softness levels of mohair, mohair can go from very, very soft to very, very coarse. A lot of that depends on the age of the animal. You can get kid mohair, which is this kind, and a kid mohair comes from a baby goat. That is basically just what a kid is. It is under, um, under I think, about one year old. Um, kid mohair is definitely wavier. Um, you can't really get kid mohair that is straight. Sorry, this hair from Slumberland, it's super nice. But I don't understand. She does not tie her hair when she sells it. Um, it comes like this, and I don't like that. I hate that, but it is great quality hair. Kid mohair is a, almost as fine as alpaca. Um, the difference would be like microscopic. If you are just feeling kid mohair and feeling alpaca, it's going to feel about the same. Um, the biggest difference would be that kid mohair is very curly and you can get alpaca that it feels just as soft, if not a little softer, that is straight. Um, the next type of hair that you can get, which I actually don't have right here, but it is yearling mohair. Yearling mohair comes from a goat that is not a baby, but it's not yet two years old. Um, so yearling mohair is very soft. It is not as soft as um, kid mohair or alpaca but it's not that big of a difference and it is very, very soft. Um, a lot of times if you see fine adult mohair, which is what this hair is, it is very soft. Um, it is pretty fine. Um, not as fine as kid or alpaca, obviously. Um, but a lot of times if you see fine adult mohair, that is going to come from a goat that's around two years old, like right before it goes into real adult stage where the hair is a lot coarser. Um, the softness levels also depend on where it is cut from. If you have a pet, like a dog or something at home, you know the hair usually around the neck is a lot softer than the hair on the top of their back, for instance. And it's the exact same way with mohair, um, where you cut matters. Um, so you can get, you know, fine adult, even kid or even real adult, where some will be softer and less coarse than others. And that is based on where, not only where it's cut from, but the number of cuts that they have. Um, if you have an adult that is getting its very first haircut, um, that hair is going to be softer than one on its fourth haircut, 
where I guess you can liken it to if you have a baby, you know, when they're a little baby, their hair is so soft. When they're a toddler, it starts getting a little bit coarse. If you don't cut their hair, though, until they're about five years old, you still have a lot of that really soft, nice hair. And then when you cut that hair off, all of the hair that grows in after that, because they're older, is more coarse. Regular adult mohair, I do not like rooting with. Um, it is the coarsest of all of the mohairs, so the strands are a bit thicker. I don't even have any regular adult mohair to show you here because I don't buy it. Um, regular adult mohair would be great for like a toddler kit, an older kit. Uh, I, do, I personally would never use it on a baby. I don't like the way it looks just for realism's sake. Um, it looks too coarse, too much like human hair. Um, some people also use human hair, um, and again, it's pretty much the same thing for me. It is definitely coarser than adult mohair, um, but unless you're doing a child-sized doll, um, it's really not going to look realistic at all on a baby or even a toddler. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is the cut end. Okay, this is something that I see so many people really, really struggle with this concept. So I want to try to break it down in the simplest of ways. Okay, say that Pickle is a goat. This is Pickle's hair. It's inside her head. We take some pruning shears and we cut it. This is the cut end. It has nothing to do with actually being cut. It has to do with the fact that this hair was closest to her skin and her body. So when I'm cutting hair, this hair for a normal baby, I would get at least four to five cuts out of this hair. So I would cut this hair right here the top hair that I cut would be my cut end because it is up here. It's still the top. It's closest to up here where it came off of the body. So now I go to do my second end and I'm cutting it here. If you're being super technical about it, now both sides are the cut end, right? No. So the cut end is still this top piece, which is the closest to where it came off of the body. Um, so it's not a literal translation as to where the hair's actually been snipped. Um, I'm going to talk to you about why it is so important to always make sure that when you are rooting, you are rooting the cut end. And... I just want to show you, for example, this hair here. Um, this was in two cuts. I cut the bottom. I cut the top again. This one it was closest to the animal's body, so this is my cut end. So when I pull my hair off, I want to make sure that I am rooting my hair with this cut end. Um, if I try to root on the other side the not cut end, the end that is closest to the ground farthest from the animal's body. This hair won't stick in. You can just pull it right out. Um, if you've ever rooted a bunch of hair and then you run your finger around it like this and it all falls out, Nine times out of ten, it's because you're not rooting from the cut end. A couple other things can also happen when you're not rooting from the cut end. If you look at a microscopic image of a hair strand, um, you can see that hair strands have cuticles and they actually have, they are like little barbs. So if you root from the cut end, the barbs are going down this way. Or I'm sorry, the barbs are going this way. Okay, so when you root, let's start that over. 
when you root from the cut end, the barb is this way. You insert the hair and it has a flare. It cannot pull out. When you root it from in this other direction, the flare is in the wrong spot. So when you go, you can just pull it right out because it doesn't have something like this blocking it to come out. It is more like this and it can just slip right out. There's nothing to hold it in there. Um, if you mix up ends, like say you have some you're rooting from the cut end and some that you're not rooting from the cut end, if you can get the hairs, which sometimes you can, sometimes you can get the hairs that are not the cut end to stick in there. Um, because they have these barbs, these barbs move together and it basically goes like this. They lock together and you get tangles, you get super frizzy hair. Um, it, it, it does not look good at all. It will be very hard to maintain. It'll just tangle like crazy. Um, you want them all facing the same way so that they're moving like harmoniously. They're not going like this and catching each other. And I'm apologize for that. I swear that was so confusing. I, I like had my things the total opposite directions. I'm going to put some photos up here so you can see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. But that is why it's so important to always make sure that you're cutting, that you're rooting from the cut end and that all of the hair is in that direction. Um, it will make it not only easier for you to root, but it'll make it easier for your customer to take care of. Um, the hair will look better. It won't tangle. It won't mat. There are a, there's one company that I know of, um, and they do not sort their hair by the cut end. They wash their hair and they just bundle it however it is. Um, and that is a huge problem. People that root with this brand of hair talk about you know, how it tangles so horribly, it's always frizzy, um, issues like that. The next thing that I want to talk about is caring for alpaca or mohair. So, okay, this information I got from, I would say, probably one of the biggest mohair processors in the Reborn community. Um, so I, and their hair is super nice. So I really take this, um, kind of like gospel, you know, like I'll take their advice over anyone else's because they have some of the best quality, uh, mohair available. Um, when you are conditioning mohair, mohair is not human hair. It is animal hair. But what happens is you cut it from the animal and so it has no more natural ability to hydrate itself with oils. Um, it does not have, nothing has the ability to really like penetrate and help keep them soft over time. Um, a lot of people, when they are caring for mohair, they spray on human hair conditioner and what you're basically doing is spraying oil on the doll's hair, which, yes, in the short term, it makes it look nice. It makes it feel nice because you're putting oil on so it'll look smoother. Um, but it doesn't do anything to help protect it long term. Um, the best thing to use on cut animal hair is pretty much exactly the same way you would care for a wool sweater. Um, and that is to use fabric softener. You don't need a lot. You need a very small amount. Um, I mix my own mo mohair conditioner. This is not it. This is thinner, but I'll just put a little bit like up to here of fabric softener and fill the rest with water. Um, what fabric softener does differently than human hair conditioner is first it has an electrical charge to it, which, um, prevents the hair from getting staticky. But it also coats the hairs in a layer that protects that cuticle from breaking down and um, 
I don't know the exact science behind it, so I'm trying to keep it like just based on exactly what I've been told, exactly what I know. Um, it coats the strands and actually ha creates like a much longer protective layer that is going to keep your hair looking nicer in the, for the long term, not just that immediate result where it looks nice, it feels soft. I mean, it will look nice, it will feel soft, but it also helps to protect the mohair for the lifetime of the baby. So that's really important. The next thing I'm going to talk about is rooting needles. Okay, I have rooting needles galore. These are the worst rooting needles to use ever. These are just the basic type of needles that you would get on eBay or Amazon. Um, as you can see, they have a ton of barbs. Um, barbs are these little notches that you're seeing. Sorry about that. Mayhem was going crazy. Okay. Um, so barbs are these little notches. Those little notches, when they catch a hair, they grab as many hairs as they can. This one, you have notches on every single side of this needle. Um, if you root with this needle, it's almost a guarantee that not only you're going to get pluggy looking hair, um, if you have it set up where there's only one hair, it can only grab one hair. It's not going to grab a lot of hairs, but what it's going to do is all these little barbs are going to leave little marks in your vinyl and it's going to like, it can give you a chewed vinyl effect. Um, I see that a lot and a lot of people will think their vinyl, vinyl is cracking and it's actually the needle that they're using has so many barbs that it is tearing the vinyl and that is what you are seeing. Um, there are also different types of needles. There are spiral needles. There are crown needles. There are forked needles. And those are pretty much um, the most. Let me see. What's the biggest fork needle I have here? I guess it is a 40. So a forked needle is blunt. It's not sharp, really. It's a little bit sharp, but it's not very sharp. Um, it has a small slit in the center of the head of the needle that goes all the way through. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get it to, oh, there it was. There it is. So it has a slit. Um, so the theory behind this is you poke it through a hair. A hair goes right in the middle of those two little slits like this, and it pushes it into the hair. Um, a lot of people really loved fork needles. I'm not one of those people. I don't use fork needles. I don't like them. I don't root well with them. Um, I think I probably don't hold them correctly because they chew my vinyl up as bad as these needles. And that is if I can even grab a hair. A lot of times I cannot even grab a hair. Um, spiral needles are really great if you are wanting to root several hairs. Um, a spiral needle is exactly what it sounds like. It has a spiral and it has several barbs on the spiral, if you can see that. So a spiral needle, um, one of these barbs will catch it, it'll go in and other barbs will catch more. So you get a lot of hairs usually if you're rooting a using a spiral needle, unless you're being very careful and making sure there's only one hair in the vicinity. Um, spiral needles are uh, great. They don't, oh shoot, I thought this one was, I thought I washed all these. Um, they don't leave large holes um, because of the spiral shape, some, I don't know exactly how they work, but somehow they don't leave holes. 
but these are not my go-to. If I was rooting like a large top, like a very large toddler or a child size, I would probably use this because I would want to get multiple hairs without the chewed vinyl. Um, so I would probably use these. They are easy to use. If you need to grab a bunch of hairs, they're great. My favorite personal um, is Crown, my personal favorite, I should say. Um, there are a lot of different sizes of crown needles. Crown needles are definitely the most common um, type of needles that people use for reborning. Um, I personally usually will, I'll use a 40 if I'm trying to do, if I'm using like um, thicker or more coarse mohair, if I'm using a fine adult, um, I'll use a 40. And the way that these are sized is 40 is the largest, 42 is a little bit smaller, 43 is even smaller, and I mean 40 is not the largest, you can get them in 36 I think even, but the higher the number, the smaller the needle. Um, I'm going to show you with this one just because it's uh, bigger. Maybe you guys could see it. Um, you could see this one has two barbs. Or no, this one actually is a single. Sorry, it looked like two the way that it's spinning. Um, so it's the same thing. You'll, wherever that barb is, that is what is going to catch the hair when you are trying to root it. So you'll need to make sure that the arm, the arm is a great way to kind of remember. You'll want to see on here, the barb is here. So that would mean on this specific needle, I would want to root it with the arm facing down. And that would make it so the arm is down, the barb is where I'm putting it onto the hair. So that is where the hair is going to slide in. And when you are doing, you know, like high end rooting, even if you're not doing super high end, even if you just want to make sure that you're only getting more hairs, um, a 42 gauge crown is fantastic. Um, you also really want to make sure that the size of the needle that you're using is the correct size for the type of hair that you're using. So for instance, if I'm using a 43 gauge crown, this needle is very, very fine. And what that means is that this notch is also very, very fine. So if I'm trying to use it on an adult mohair, these strands are just too thick to fit into that notch. So I'm going to have problems. I'm not going to be able to actually root a hair because the notch is just going right over it. It's not actually hooking it. It is just too small. The hair will not fit in there. Um, and it goes both ways. If I am rooting alpaca and I try rooting that with a 40 gauge crown, my alpaca is super fine and I am using it with this giant needle. So what happens is I insert my strand of that super fine hair and I'm poking a large hole in. That hair can just slide right out because the hole is too large for that hair. Um, so again, you want to make sure that whenever you are choosing a needle size, that you're paying attention to the type of hair that you're using. The finer the hair, the, the larger number you want to use the finer needle. You want to make sure that you're matching hair to size. All right, you guys, I think that that is it. I'm pretty sure uh, if I miss something that you want to know about, definitely let me know.